Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, we're gonna be discussing rear main seal replacement in a V8 five liter Coyote engine. Now these same basic steps, principles, procedures, whatever you wanna call it, they will also work with the other V8 engines in the Ford modular engine family because of the retainer plate design. The car we're gonna be working on today is a 2013 Candy Red GT. Scott Hubbard is gonna be turning the wrenches for us. Kind of what led us up to replacing the rear main seal on this particular car was we recently installed the SVE six piston front brake upgrade kit. And whenever we got the car outside to burnish the brake pads, the clutch pedal fell to the floor. We kind of had a telltale sign that it was a slave cylinder, but because of what we do, we know you guys find value in all of our how-to videos. Figured what the heck, let's just break all this stuff up and uh, we'll get some videos out of it. Speaking of those videos, if you want to know how to remove your transmission, clutch, flywheel, pressure plate, all that good stuff, as well as install it, uh, we have some dedicated videos on those and they'll be available down in the video description. Also down in the description, I'm going to leave a tool list as well as applicable torque specs. It's also good to mention, if you have a Mustang with an automatic transmission, make note of the shifter linkage and the automatic transmission cooler lines. If you're watching this video and you have an engine other than the Coyote, let's think logically here. Um, again, most of the steps related to the rear main seal, they're gonna serve for you as well because of maybe certain engine displacements, certain year ranges, some of the components obviously will slightly differ. And for this video, we'll be starting with all the transmission related stuff already out of the way. So with the transmission and its related components removed from the vehicle, go ahead and remove the crankshaft sensor ring. This is also referred to as a pulse ring or an exciter ring. Remove the separator plate from the engine block. Use a metal tool to help dislodge it if it's needed. Disconnect the crankshaft position sensor electrical connection. Loosen the sensor hold down bolt with an eight millimeter ratcheting wrench. Slide the sensor out of the retainer plate. If desired, remove the block plug and clean the area with quality brake clean and some towels. Loosen and remove the eight bolts securing the retainer plate in place. There are six on the engine block and two on the oil pan. Now you can use a hook and point pry bar to separate the retainer plate from the engine block. After further inspection with the retainer plate removed, we noticed that the factory installed silicone around the plate was a reason for the small leak. Cover the oil pan with some paper towels and then remove the old silicone from the engine block with a razor blade. Clean the area with brake clean and a towel. Position the retainer plate on a workbench and prop it up with a piece of wood or something similar. Use a drifting hammer to remove the existing rear main seal. Clean up the retainer plate in a parts washer or with some brake clean. Be sure and scrape all the old silicone off of the retainer plate as well. Go ahead and clean up the retaining bolts while you're at it. After cleaning, we brush the mating surface with a wire wheel and blew the plate with some compressed air. Place the retainer plate face down on the workbench as if it was installed onto the engine. Align the seal by hand and situate it to where it stays in place. The gasket side will be facing toward you. Take a thin metal disc that is larger than the seal, place it over the seal, and then put it in a large vise. Now you can close the vise to easily press the seal into place. Make sure the seal is pressed evenly when doing this. You'll want the seal to be flush with the outside face of the retainer plate. Verify that the garter spring is in the seal and that it didn't pop out. Lubricate the seal lips with fresh engine oil or assembly grease. Give the mating surface on the retainer plate one final wipe with a clean towel. Apply an eighth inch bead of RTV silicone to the mating surfaces. Make sure you apply this to the inside of the bolt holes. Apply a 5 16 bead of silicone to both sides of the oil pan where it meets the engine block. Position the retainer plate into place and then use a small flathead screwdriver to verify that the lip on the seal doesn't roll inward. Install all of the previously removed bolts by hand. Run these down evenly to fully seat the retainer plate. Then you can run down the two bolts on the oil pan. First, torque the retainer plate to engine block bolts in a crisscross pattern to 89 pound inch first, then rotate an additional 45 degrees. Then the oil pan bolts can be torqued using the same specs. Reinstall the crankshaft position sensor and torque the bolt to 89 pound inch. Reconnect the electrical connection and verify that you hear an audible click. Reinstall the crankshaft position ring in the correct orientation. 
the teeth will face towards the engine. After that, you can reinstall all the transmission related components and you're good to go. All right, people, as always, hope you found value in this video. If you're stuck on anything, you have some questions, uh, drop us a comment. We'll make sure you're taken care of. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way you don't miss any of our future uploads. And until we see you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things 79 to present Mustang. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.